Okay, this is lest we, let me ask another question. How many have heard of lest we forget organization? Okay, one, two, three, good. Um, lest we forget started in 2006 and uh, we started out with about 30 members and the individual right here, he and I started Lest We Forget. I'm over here and, and uh, this is uh, the membership. We have since grown to 350, over 300. Uh, now, one of our signature th events that we have is we've had, let's see, we 2000 and 2009, 2010, 2012, 13, we skipped 14, uh, 2015, 16, we've had beach landings. And uh, the beach land, this is uh, uh, the planes that called the hooligans that flew overhead for the beach landing. Now, this is a Higgins boat. And if you're familiar with, this is the boat that Eisenhower said saved the world. 20,000 were made. and. Uh, there's only a cup, a few in the country. And uh, this happened to be uh, Kenny Adams from Ohio. And it's the first time that he had done anything with like this for a beach landing. And as you can see, he almost submerged it. We were on shore there. We were afraid that uh, he wouldn't get that tailgate up, uh, a ramp up quick enough because the water's coming, came in a little bit. But that was his first time of doing a beach landing with that craft. Now he's got it down. I got a call, we had, we usually have two ducks, two gators at, at, at our beach landing, but I got a call from Tom Price in Ohio that he's got, they've located one Higgins boat and possibly two for, for this next year. So we'll have two Higgins boats, two, two ducks, and one gator. The gator that we have, it comes from um, Tom Price, Bowling Green. Here you go, walk around. <laughs> comes from Bowling Green, Ohio, and it was in Flags of Our Father, the movie by Mel Gibson. Uh, he was, uh, um, and he went up to Iceland for three, uh, for eight weeks, uh, to, and he drives in the, in the film, so. But anyways, they, they're hitting the beach in St. Joe right now. There's another, another shot of them, and you can, you know, they, they didn't come all the way in, and that's what happened to a lot of our in World War II, and a lot of them got in much deeper water than that. There's a soldier that got hit, and uh, pretty, pretty realistic, isn't it? <laughs> this is, uh, now that's Tuscornia Beach, which we have, and, and right at the beach, there's about 100 yards, 150 yards, there was 150 yards of sand. That sand all disappeared this last year. Uh, Lake Michigan down in our area is up 18 inches and we lost our entire beach so we couldn't have beach landings this year but uh, we have a flamethrower down on the beach and then we had uh, pyrotechnics going off so you can see now there's the two of the German officers uh, doing having a little conference I guess but you can see the crowd in the background um, and there we got two flamethrowers and one of the flamethrowers you can't see him, but he, Herschel Williams. And there, we've had eight Medal of Honor recipients to come to our event. One of them, Herschel Williams, he was a Marine. Anybody heard of Herschel? Um, he, he, he was a flamethrower for four hours. Uh, the, the, um, um, av the, the life expectancy of a flamethrower in battle was like six minutes. He lasted four hours. He had, uh, uh, I think, six or eight of his um, um, Brownie automatic riflemen, BAR handlers, that were killed. But he, he was on the um, Iwo Jima. He was on Iwo Jima. And of the, tw there were 28 medals of honor issued for Iwo Jima. 14 living and 14 uh, posthumously. And of the 14 living, Herschel is the only one still living. My wife and I were in uh, Minneapolis this week, last week, attending the Medal of Honor convention, and Woody is 89, and uh, he's uh, still as spry as can be. 
That's the, some of the crowd. Then we go out to the airport and we have ground battles and uh, this is some of the, uh, that wild thing is a um, five ton truck, a gun truck, and uh, the uh, vehicle in front, I'm not sure, it's uh, like a pickup, but it's uh, been modified a little bit, I think. And we open the ceremony with the American flag coming down. And we've got a real nice grassy field at the airport. So this is the um, getting into combat. We've got reenactors come from all, well, not all over, but yeah, a lot. Indiana, Michigan, Illinois. We had two frame throwers last year. And uh, I'll tell you what, you can be 50 yards away from that flamethrower and you can feel the heat from, from that. It's, it's, uh, it's quite amazing. This is Johnny Mayo. Johnny Mayo was a dog handler in Vietnam. Oh, God, I didn't bring his book. He wrote a real interesting book on his dog saved his life. And uh, so he raised $150,000 and has a dog statue honoring the Vietnam dogs in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. But uh, Johnny comes to our event. He, he brings dogs that he's trained to do what his dog did in Vietnam. And uh, gets up on the, the dog. They're in the, they're in the, he's sitting in the seat in the chopper, the canvas seat there, and the dog is waiting next to him. We've got two helicopters. Both of these were flown in Vietnam. Uh, there's a unit in Kokomo, Indiana. Uh, John, John Walker is the individual. And um, the, the one still up in the air there, well, no, the, one, the front one here is the medevac. And that was flown in Vietnam. And then it came back to the United States and was flown by a National Guard unit for a while and then went into scrap pile. And they resurrected it. And the one up um, above is the gunship. And... Uh, They've been coming to our event for the last 10 years. Uh, they go all over the Midwest, and uh, this is a couple German vehicles that participate. There's the wild thing. That was a gun, a gun truck. It's not, not an actual gun truck that was in uh, Vietnam, but it's, the, it's a replica of, of one that they had there. And that's the end of the battle, and obviously the good guys won again. <laughs> Although they, they do mix it up. Sometimes the Germans win the, the uh, skirmishes too, so. I shouldn't have flashed that up. What? Did you say this is at St. Joseph, Michigan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what is it? Huh? And Benton Harbor Airport. Yeah, and Benton Harbor Airport in St. Joe Beach but it's all together. Uh, the problem is we were scheduling it for first week of August, and that conflicts with the, with the um, no, I take it back, June 24th, the, the last weekend in June, which we've had it, conflicts with the um, boat owners because they have an event that they go to in Cleveland, Ohio, and, that he has to go to. So we, were move, we moved it tentatively to the first weekend in August, and now I understand that that's, there's a problem with that week. I don't, I'm not sure what the date's gonna be, but what we're gonna do, I think, instead of doing a beach landing and then go out to the airport and do battles and stuff, it turns into a three-day event, we're gonna have a, a Saturday for the beach landings and then another Saturday for the battles at the airport. So we won't, uh, um, all of us are getting a little older, and it's it's really a job to when you get ten, fifteen thousand people. How do we get information about it? I, 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 there's a website, and uh, um, I tell everybody there's a lest we forget it's a expensive organization to belong to. It's ten dollars a year, unless you're over eighty or under forty, and it's free. So, uh, and we have. Like I said, we have, we're up to about 360 members. Uh, a lot of those are connected through email and keep abreast of what we're doing and come to one or, you know, events when they can make it. 
because I keep everybody posted. We have an email chain. We have three, two groups, uh, each split up. So that, uh, so I got some membership blanks there. Now, that American flag, how many stars does it have on it? Huh? Uh, I don't think so. 50, it might, it would, I'm pretty sure. All right. The question is, I have this book of heroes. Got the, about 80. Uh, there's around 70 stories in here. The World War II, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. Now, there is a there is a story in here on World War One guy. We went to see him five times before he died. Does anybody know who that individual was? He died in 2009. Frank Buckles. He was um, in 2007. We found out that he was going to be 108, and we have an individual in our in our unit that in our gr group that has designed a flag called the spirit flag and it's a flag that has all of the battles that the united states has been involved in little skirmishes and even has 911 has everything and this the the man that's developed at dale hemphill is a member of our organization and he found out that frank was having his 108th birthday and he wanted to um Well, yeah, there's a, there's a picture of us at his uh, at his house. Frank had a house that was between Hager, it was between yeah, Hagerstown and Washington D.C. in Charlestown, West Virginia, and he had about a 350 acres. It was a house that was built in the 1800s, but George Washington surveyed it in 1746 when he was a teenage surveyor. And it had belonged to the Washington family for quite a few years, and then, but this Frank Buckles ended up with it. And he, uh, anyways, we made we made three, uh, five trips to Frank Buckles' house every six months to replace the flag and put a new one up, and uh, just to talk to Frank. And uh, uh, then, in, and he, the last time we left him, he was 100, and he was going to be 110, and uh, but he said he was going to live to 115. Well. A couple weeks later, he died. It was 109, and, a, and two months short of 110. But uh, his story is in here. Um, but my, to go back to uh, the American flag, who designed this 50-star American flag? Betsy Ross? No. <laughs> Ever hear of a name, Bob Heft? Um, Bob Heft is right there. As a high school student in 1958, they had a contest to select the flags. At that time, we had 48 stars. And Alaska was coming in, or Hawaii was coming in? Alaska was coming in. Or no, Hawaii was coming in. And um, Hawaii was Democrat. And the Republicans were, con uh, Eisenhower and the P Republicans were in control. and. So anyways, there was this contest to design a 49-star uh, flag. And the, Bob designed his flag, but he designed a 50-star flag. And he, his teacher, history teacher, gave him a B minus, and he was an A-plus student. And Bob was, he said, asked the teacher, why did you do that? And he said, because the, the contest is a 49-star, not a 50. And he said, if you, th if you think it is, should get something, send it into Washington. Well. He did that, and eventually, the next year, he got a call from Eisenhower saying, son, we're gonna, your flag has been the, uh, adopted as our standard flag, standard bearer flag, we want you to come. And uh, so Bob, uh, as a high school junior, designed the American flag. And he lived in Saginaw and came to eight of our events. And then in 2010, uh, he passed away. But uh, 
He, he is the only one that's authorized to sign the American flag um, because he designed it. But uh, there he signed the flag for uh, Claire Musgrove, who was a pilot in World War II, shot down over Plusty, and was rescued in a book called The Forgotten 500. It was a really good book by Gregory Freeman. But it was uh, 500 pilots that had been shot, British and American pilots that had been shot down, were rescued uh, before they were taken over by Tito. Anyways, we had an avenue of flags that year. We had 13, 1,350 flags flying. And we line our airport every day, every year, for our event called the Avenue of Flags. OK, there's Frank um, Bob Hepp. Now, this is so interesting, because that case that Bob has is the original f flag that he sold. Uh, he took the family flag one Saturday, he said, when, the, when the, his mother and dad were out. And actually, you know, he was living with his grandparents when his grandmother and grandfather were out. And he sewed in, cut up their flag, and, and put two stars on, took two stars from another flag, and put it on this one. And, uh, and his parents, when he came home, grandparents, when he came home, when they came home, were really upset. But uh, he is explaining that picture is really tremendous historical significance. The designer of the Ameri current American flag talking to the last living World War I soldier. Wow. Actually, Frank lived to be 100 and, 109 and a half, two, two thirds. There was a woman in, a, woman, a female soldier in Australia that outlived him by two weeks. So he was second uh, oldest uh, living survivor. So anyways, that, uh, that's quite a picture there. And that house, that's the house that Washington family designed. It's been, it had been rebuilt a little bit, but the front of the building, and I do not have a picture of the front, they kept the original um, archway and stuff. But there's the spirit flag flying on top of that, uh, below the American flag, and that was what got us going to, uh, in the first place, to, uh, to present this spirit flag, because Dale wanted to, to uh, present a, this flag to the, um, to the last living World War I veteran, huh? The flagpole. He didn't yeah, we got, we, we finally got a hold of his daughter and we, we told her that we wanted to bring an, uh, a, a Spirit of America flag, an American flag, uh, for, his, for his house. And she said, well, we don't have a flagpole. So that would be a problem. Well, I called one flag company and they said it'd be $350. I called Uncommon USA, and I promote Uncommon USA in Chicago because I told them what it was for. I told the other company what it was for, and it was still $350. When I told them that it was for the last living American World War I veteran, uh, they sent it to him. They sent it Special Express because I talked to him on a Tuesday. We got to his house on Friday. Friday afternoon, we dug the hole, put the concrete in, and Saturday, we raised the flag. And, uh, but this company didn't, uh, Uncommon USA, did not charge me a penny. And uh, that's why I promote them whenever I do presentations like this. But yeah, that's the, uh, and his, far, his farm sits up on top of a hill. And 10 miles to the west, no, 10 miles to the east is Antietam. And 10 miles to the west is Harper's Ferry. He is right in the middle of the Civil War stuff and everything. It's, it's, it is a tremendous place to visit. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. Pushed the wrong button. Okay, we do parades. This year we did nine parades. Uh, Niles, St. Joe, Benton Harbor, Waterville, Coloma. And we have three vehicles. Uh, we have the Jeep, which is a fit 1952 uh, Willys Jeep. No, Ford Jeep, it's a Ford Jeep. Um, the second one is a um, weasel, army weasel. Yeah, and the third one is the mule that pulls our trailer, a Navy mule. And uh, those, we've picked up those through, through people that donated them. And this was our, one of our parades. We, we had about 25 or 30 that participated in in the parades, and uh, they really come out good. This, 
This is a concert. We're doing our concert uh, November the 6th at the Mendel Center, which is in Benton Harbor at Lake Michigan College. And we have the South Shore Concert Band. It's an 80-piece band. And what they're doing is, the theme is patriotism through history, uh, through music. Patriotism through music. There, he, the band director has selected a song, Yankee Doodle, for Revolutionary War, selected a song for 1812 War, selected a song for the Civil War, uh, all the way up to the present. Mansions of the Lord was he selected for Vietnam. But what we're going to do is we're offering two $500 scholarships to the uh, local school students. And we've got one scholarship that's earmarked for seventh through ninth grade and another one for 10th through 12th, uh, $500 scholarship each for the 500 words or less essay of what this, uh, how they were influenced by the listening to the music, uh, patriotic music. Uh, that's not the official title, but uh, we're, we're doing that. It's the first time we've done it because Unfortunately, when I look out at the audience at our concerts, the audience is 80%, 85% veterans and, and us older people. And very few young kids, uh, people are there. And so this is our attempt, we'll, uh, we'll find out how it takes off, but to, to, try to try to get the school kids in, uh, school age, because they can get in for free. So we're having the South Shore Concert Band. Jeff Whitaker, who's a guest soloist, uh, is a fantastic singer. He's singing uh, Mansions of the Lord and um, um, two or three other songs. What are the times? Um, two o'clock, November the 6th. There's a fly I've got some flyers up there. November the 6th is a Sunday. But from 1 o'clock to 1.45, we are taking veterans' pictures. And they will be taken by, we've got a camera club that does fantastic work. And for the last five years, we've taken World War II pictures. And the first year we did it, we took like 42, and then it dropped to about 38. And, then it, and last year, I think we had 25, because the World War II veterans are passing on. But Ken McEwen, who's our photographer, thinks he's got five photographers lined up. And from 1 o'clock to 145, we're going to be taking pictures of all vets, whether it's Iraq, Afghanistan, Desert Storm, Vietnam. Korea, World War II. And within two or three weeks after the program, you'll get the pictures in the mail, a photo. Matter of fact, one individual has a picture taken last year. I saw it was in our paper a couple days ago for his obituary photo. So it's quality photo, but uh, um, so that's from one, one to 145 are these pictures that, uh, that uh, and they're free. There's no, no charge for getting, for getting your pictures. A lot of guys come in there military uniform or hats or coat or shirts or whatever they have. Um, a salute to each branch of the Army and so forth. The, the flyers are up here. And uh, we'd love to have you come down. Um, what did I do? Here it is. Now, that, this is Herschel Williams, the Medal of Honor. He's 89, I think, 90. No, yeah, he's, in, he's in, 90 or 91. But he's the last living World War II, uh, Iwo Jima Medal of Honor recipient. Lives in, um, uh, by Char West Virginia, Charleston, by Charleston. And that's just two members of Lest We Forget. Matter of fact, the one in the middle is uh, our state representative, uh, Al Pachoka, and Herschel's on the right there. Uh, this individual, you may be familiar with, Dwayne Dewey. Have you heard of Dwayne Dewey? Dwayne has come to, he grew up in South Haven, well, Grand Rapids, and then as a grade school student, he moved to South Haven and spent 10 or 15 years there. But now he lives up in Baldwin here, so he's in your area. But Dwayne, Dwayne's on the right, the uniform on the right, received the Medal of Honor for, um, there was a, grenade that was thrown in this foxhole. And there were five of them in the foxhole, and he, they didn't ha he didn't have time to th reach down and throw it out, so he just plopped on it, and uh, the grenade blew. And President Eisenhower, when he was presenting the Medal of Honor to Duane, said, you, you must have a stomach of steel. But he spent 18 months in the hospital, but, uh, and I understand he did not 
my wife and I went to the Medal of Honor program two weeks ago, last week, two weeks, last two weeks ago, a week ago in Minneapolis. And uh, Herschel was there, but from what I hear, Duane is having some health problems. But uh, he, there's a, the, the American Legion post in, in Baldwin is named after him, Duane Dewey. Um, that's Doc Ballard. He's a Marine, the guy in the middle, <laughs> the short guy. He was a, Doc Ballard was a medic in, Marine medic in uh, Vietnam and uh, has quite a story uh, about his experience. He lives in Missouri. Anybody, can anybody tell me who that is? And if you can, I'm going to give you this book. Can anybody tell me who this is? He was just in the paper two weeks ago. He's been on TV a bunch. Frank Kettles, the, the latest uh, Medal of Honor recipient, he, he, he uh, they did a review of, of uh, Medal of Honor, uh, not Medal of Honor, of, of recipients of medals in, uh, in Vietnam. And he was a chopper pilot that flew his chopper three or four, time, four times back into an LZ that was completely surrounded. And the last time he flew out, he had 12 or 15, 14, I think, on the chopper. <coughs> and the chopper had been hit with numerous bullets. And the, they still don't know how he was able to fly it out. But uh, his story is very interesting. And uh, Obama, a couple months, about a month ago, presented, it was on TV, presented him with the uh, uh, Medal of Honor. He lives in Ypsilanti. And that would be, he would be an interesting speaker for, for you guys to get. Where's, where's what? Ypsilanti. He, he went, he, he got out of the service after retiring as a colonel, lieutenant colonel, and developed the aviation program at Eastern Michigan University. And, and yeah, he would be a, a real interesting speaker. Um, one of the things that we did, and that you could, something that you could do here in this community, we had uh, classes, we had a whole course, a semester long course on um, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and then a desert, no, no. Then last, this last year, because most of us are too old for these Iraq, Afghanistan wars, uh, Whirlpool Corporation is located in our town and they have a couple hundred members of their veterans club and most of them are, you know, 25, 30, 50, 45. Uh, participate in the conflict. So we put on a modern conflicts warfare class. But this World War II class, that's only a third of the room. We, we had over 175 that attended for a whole semester, 12 classes. Um, and the guy standing there is Frank, Franklin Smith. He was the mayor of St. Joe for many years. Um, he was a driver, chauffeur for um, Eisenhower at one time. Uh, but he had some really interesting stories to tell. And Marv Fuller was a sailor on the Saratoga, <coughs> excuse me, that was shot. And uh, Marv and I started, lest we forget. Marv and I uh, were on a street patrol, uh, not street patrol, yeah, more, uh, helping out the Benton Harbor Police Department. Uh, right around the squad car, and, and we got talking about how we needed to get more patriotism in the schools and in the community. And uh, so we started these classes. Now, these are the World War II vets that, that was, and they're not all of them, but most of them are, were, there's two thirds of the, the, these were speakers. I mean, two thirds of the speakers are here. And uh, there's 10 there, and I think I counted the other night, six of them have passed on. Uh, Yeah, the, uh, um, there's some interesting stories in there. Wait a minute. Yeah, these are for um, Frank Smith in World War II. And then we've done, this is a program at one of the schools. Uh, now this is, a, you saw that picture at the beginning. That was uh, uh, the first picture, a group picture. This was a picture that was taken last year at uh, our membership meetings. Now we get, we meet on the first Wednesday of the month at, nine, at 10 o'clock 
at the um, Benton Harbor Airport. And, and uh, we get between 50 and 75 to come out, which is pretty good, really good. Um, and the ones that, that can't make it because they're working stay in touch with, uh, by email. But, uh, so that's the, lest we forget, um, I've got some books up here. This, each time we do a book, they get a little bit, a little bit better. Um, this book has a lot of pictures in it, and they're in color. And uh, I like this is World War II, my story, Rex Welch. Rex, I didn't, as long as I'm on his page. Uh, he lives in Battle Creek now. He lived in Bering Spring. He participated in four jumps. He was at the 101st. He did Africa. He did Italy. He did Normandy. And he did Market Garden. And of those four, people that did that, what, it, what I've heard is one or two percent survived off four jumps. And uh, Rex is still, I saw the picture in the paper yesterday. Now, this is an article on Eisenhower. Some old pictures of Ike. Of Ike. And uh, Vietnam. And then what we did, we have 47 individuals that were killed in Vietnam from Berrien County. And one of our members w went, to the, w went to the newspapers and um, took as much information as he could. Then he went online and got a whole bunch of information. And then he called and contacted 29 of the 47 families to get more information. This is the most complete information of Berrien County casualties that, 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 that exists. And, uh, but these are all things that, that you guys could be doing as a community project. One of the things that we did last couple weeks ago, which really worked out good, was you had your speaker, Tom Tudor, here, uh, talking about uh, Arlington and the, um, the cemetery and stuff. And, but the day before, he came down to our place and did a, a super program down there. And by sharing the speakers and stuff, it, uh, it, I think it would be a, a nice setup.